Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is such a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Uh, my name is Ian, as you can see, Ian Bowley, B-O-L-E-Y, and I am uh, the new associate pastor here. Uh, I have uh, met uh, some of you before our early service. I met a couple of you in between while we were scrambling back and forth to get ready. I look forward to meeting more of you uh, when we're done here. And uh, thank you all just so much for uh, welcoming me and my family so warmly to this community and to this church. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about myself today. I'm going to give you a bit of a life story, and part of the reason we were scrambling back and forth is because my message ran kind of long next door, so we were at the last minute getting in here to get ready. But uh, I'm going to tell you some about my backstory, a lot about my family and my upbringing, a little bit about my hobbies and interests. Uh, and as you can see, I've titled my message, A Path of Grace. A Path of Grace. Because the consistent theme in this story is God's grace. It's a grace that can never be denied and never be refused. Uh, God's grace is there for us at all times. And especially during the holiest and most delicate moments of our lives. Times of transition, we've been in one for the last few weeks, months here. Times when the spirit is moving in brand new ways. So it's a path of grace. Now, but before I get into that path, before I get into that uh, story, uh, allow me to take us through today's gospel reading. It comes from Matthew today, and uh, as you saw earlier, it's part of our ongoing series, Flawed But Faithful. And as you hear today's reading, if you've been paying close attention, you'll notice that this passage happens between two very sacred moments in the Gospel of Matthew. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit here on my first Sunday, and I'm going to backtrack and read a few verses before it starts. I'm going to go back to verse 26. So we are in uh, Matthew 26. We're in 26 through 30 now. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many so that their sins may be forgiven. And I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then, after singing songs of praise, they went to the Mount of Olives. So, in a moment, we'll get up to the regularly scheduled reading for today. But before that part starts, what does Jesus do with his disciples? Uh, the same thing we will all do in a couple of minutes. He shares Holy Communion with them. Then they actually sing a couple of songs before they go to the Mount of Olives. Now, the reason that I've shared this is, again, to stress that this next exchange between Jesus and Peter happens in the midst of two very sacred moments. So we'll pick up in verse 31 here. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Tonight, you will all fall away because of me. This is because it is written, I will hit the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will go off in all directions. But after I'm raised up, I'll go before you to Galilee. And Peter replied, typical Peter, if everyone else stumbles because of you, I'll never stumble. That sounds like Peter, doesn't it? Jesus said to him, I assure you that before the rooster crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter then said, even if I must die alongside you, I won't deny you. 
all the disciples said the same thing. Now, before I read this, again, I mentioned that this exchange, it happens between two sacred moments. The first one was Holy Communion. Uh, Does anyone know what the second one is? Who knows the Gospel of Matthew? What story beat comes next here? Crucifixion, that is coming up, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a clue, and I'll, let's read the next verse. We'll go to verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to the disciples, stay here while I go pray over there. So the next part of the story is Jesus praying in Gethsemane. Peter and the others fall asleep just after claiming that they will never falter. Nothing in the gospel happens on accident. Matthew does this on purpose. And the point, again, is that God's grace enters into our lives during the most delicate and sacred moments, and God's grace enters into our stories when we are at our weakest, at our most vulnerable, when we have failed or when we have denied God, as Peter does. Now, Holy Week, of course, it's not Holy Week for us, it's Holy Week for them, right? Holy Week. It's not only the time of mourning and triumph for God and the world, it is also a time when we are invited back into God's grace, even as we may attempt to deny it. So, the path of grace. What is that path? What is my story? Well, that's what I'll, uh, I'll devote the rest of my time to, if you'll allow. So again, my name is Ian Boley. Uh, Some of you might recognize the last name. I'm a third generation Methodist pastor here in uh, the Michigan Conference of the UMC. My grandfather, uh, Robert or Bob Boley, uh, served for years in the Detroit Conference uh, back before they merged with the West Michigan Conference, if you know your Michigan church history. And then my dad, John Boley, served in the West Michigan Conference for many years while I was growing up. So uh, Michigan is home for me and my family. I grew up in the Michigan Conference of the UMC. Uh, I was born in Grand Rapids over on the west side back in 1987. Uh, So despite my hairline, I'm still pretty young. Uh, I do have an older brother, Rob, who was also born in Grand Rapids in 84. My parents, John and Diane, were attending Grand Rapids Trinity UMC at the time. But when I was two years old, uh, our family moved to Durham, North Carolina, while, while my dad attended seminary at Duke Divinity School. So for three years, we assimilated into life in North Carolina, and believe it or not, by age five, I had developed a pretty thick southern accent uh, and a love for Duke basketball. Coach K, Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, this is early 90s for any basketball fans out there. But... Uh, When my dad graduated seminary, we came back to Michigan. We returned to northern Michigan where he had his first ministry appointment. It was a two-point charge in Mansalona and Alba UMCs. Anybody know Mansalona or Alba by any chance? A couple of you, all right. Not far from the Traverse City area. We were there for five years from 92 to 97, so this was mid-90s. So any other uh, millennials out there who were coming of age in the mid-90s, this is when I was uh, going through everything that happened in the mid-90s for us. Uh, During that time, my younger sister Hannah was born in 93. Uh, Among one of the biggest challenges for our family over the years was Hannah's diagnosis at birth with cystic fibrosis. 
Uh, she had to stay in the hospital for several, uh, for several weeks, rather, before she came home, and she spent most of her childhood on medications and the therapy treatments to deal with this disease. Uh, back in 2016, there's a longer version of this story, but the short version is uh, back in 2016, Hannah uh, came down with pneumonia, went into the university hospital in Ann Arbor, and ended up receiving a double lung transplant. Absolutely incredible procedure. Uh, we are so, so, so grateful for the work that they did there at the university hospital. And uh, today, Hannah is in the best health of her life, and I am overjoyed to be able to welcome her to worship here in the sanctuary this morning. Yeah. And she, she may or may not wish to tell you the longer version of that story. So, it's 1997 now. Uh, our family was then appointed to Lansing Central UMC in downtown Lansing. Big church, old building, a lot of problems. Five stressful years we spent at Lansing Central. Uh, so for me, this was middle school and early high school. Church is still very much at the center of our lives. We were involved in Sunday school, youth group, handbell choir, regular choir, church camp, softball teams, basketball teams, anything else that you can think of. But after five busy and challenging years in Lansing, we were then appointed to Mount Pleasant, First United Methodist, right in the middle of the state, in 2002, and my dad served there for eight years. Uh, so here's a big shift in my story. Uh, while we were in Mount Pleasant, I became involved in performing arts and theater at the local high school, Mount Pleasant High School. I developed some lifelong friendships. Some of my best friends to this day are people that I met in the theater program at that high school. So if you were in Mount Pleasant at the time, you might have seen me playing the wizard in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, running around the stage saying things like e pluribus unum and universitatis committeatum and things like that. I also played Fishmonger number two in The Fiddler on the Roof, one of my earliest and favorite roles of all time. So, uh, when I graduated high school in Mount Pleasant, I wanted to continue in performing arts, so I enrolled in the Music Theater Performance Program at Central Michigan University. Are there any CMU alumni here today? Yeah, we had a few, yes, my, my mother-in-law and <laughs> her sister both. We had a couple in, uh, in Impact earlier as well, some in the choir too. All right, fire up chips. So. Uh, while I was at CMU, I was in other musicals like Kiss Me Kate and Pal Joey and Little Women. Yes, they did make a musical out of Little Women. Uh, and while I was there, I met my now wife, Jessica. So here's a picture of us uh, a few months back. So Jessica, of course, is here this morning, too. Uh, we were both involved in that program there. Uh, we became good friends while we were at CMU, but we didn't start dating until a few years later, so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, after college, I took a job. I'm going to take you through, if you don't mind, I'll take you through just a little bit of my work history. I'll try not to run too long here today, but... Uh, I took a job with a touring children's theater company called Missoula Children's Theater. Uh, they operate out of Missoula, Montana. It's a beautiful little college town in the Bitterroot Valley in western Montana. And this company travels around the United States and Canada working with local kids to put on public domain musicals, fairy tales, literature, things like that that they've adapted. They're teaching them communication and performance skills, and in many cases, they were serving as the arts program for underprivileged communities that didn't have their own arts program, underprivileged school districts that didn't have any other resources. And I worked with them for almost three years, and to this day, it's one of the most rewarding and, ex and, uh, and unique experiences of my life. Uh, after Missoula Children's Theater, I started bouncing around a few different U.S. cities. So fast forward to 2012, the year's 2012, we're moving forward through time here. I am working at a nonprofit in Midtown Manhattan called the Theater Communications Group. 
And this group specializes in providing resources to small regional theater companies. They did some publishing work. They also provided educational resources to arts programs. And they did some advocacy work for performing arts funding at various levels of government. So one of the things I got to do with them was attend a national arts advocacy day in Washington, D.C., uh, where I was in and out of meetings with senators, representatives, and their staff members advocating for increased funding for performing arts programs in our education system. And uh, just in case you're wondering, we, uh, we were not as successful as some other lobbyists in Washington have been over the years. But uh, while I was uh, in New York, uh, another significant moment happens. While I was in New York, I was reconnecting with Jessica. Uh, she was working in Chicago at the time. We had stayed in touch for a couple of years, and I can see Cindy tearing up over there as I'm telling the story, yeah. Uh, we stayed in touch for a couple of years, and we were becoming close friends via distance. We were talking to each other every day, and uh, the sort of adorable short version of the story is that we reconnected at the wedding of our two best friends back here in Michigan, where we were the best man and the maid of honor. So it, it was like something right out of a romantic comedy. It was wonderful. Uh, so shortly after that, we decided to pursue a relationship together. So I packed up my bags and I moved to Chicago. So bouncing around again at this point. Uh, now, uh, it was in Chicago that I decided to pursue pastoral ministry. Uh, I was working as a barista at a uh, charming little local coffee shop called Starbucks. Uh, I was beginning the most serious relationship of my life. Uh, I was trying to decide if I wanted to pursue government, nonprofit advocacy work or theater work in the city. Uh, but as I was working through all of this, uh, a new option entered into the equation. Uh, now, I had been, uh, at this point, I'd been feeling homesick. I'd been away from Michigan for some time. I was experiencing a lot of anxiety, some personal anxiety, some vocational anxiety, and a little bit of depression, too. And so I was dealing with a lot of uncertainty about what my future held. So one day, after work, smelling like coffee beans, I walked across the street, and I walked into the First United Methodist Church in downtown Chicago. If you're familiar with that area, it's sometimes also called the Chicago Temple, right in the heart of downtown. I sat in one of the pews and I prayed. And it just felt like home. I didn't have a voice speak to me or anything, but it felt like home. It felt like family. It felt like God was providing the answer to my questions. I told Jessica about it and she said she thought ministry would be a good path for me and so uh, on Christmas Day of 2012, as the story goes, I told my parents that I was thinking about a path in ministry. My mom cried. My dad started making plans and started looking at seminary programs for me. And so the following fall, after a year in Chicago, I enrolled at the Boston University School of Theology in Boston, where my grandfather Bob had gone. So again, bouncing around. Uh, I spent three absolutely wonderful years in Boston. To this day, it's my favorite city that I've ever visited or uh, spent any time in or lived in. Love Boston to death. Uh, during that time, Jessica and I were engaged and married back here in Michigan. And uh, Jessica and her family, by the way, are all from Livonia. A little Eliza's getting a little restless here as I'm telling our story. <laughs> uh, Jessica's and my first home was a garden-level brownstone apartment in Boston, just a few blocks away from Fenway Park. Uh, so you can imagine some of the experiences we had while we were there. Uh, we still cherish our time together in Boston. Uh, and when I graduated, we moved back here to Michigan. So we're getting closer to the end here, I promise. We're getting closer to the end. We moved back to Michigan. I started my first ministry appointment at Wald Lake UMC up in Commerce, just a little bit north of here. And while we were there, we adopted our first puppy, Pippin. Here you can see him basking in the sun a couple of weeks ago. 
Pippin is an eight-year-old beagle mix. Uh, he loves making new friends and chasing squirrels. He will bark at you if you come to our house, but he is as friendly as can be. Uh, he's also dealing with a couple minor health issues. He's got a bad ligament in his right knee and some sores on his backside that are taking a while to heal. So we welcome any prayers you may have for our little baby boy here. So fast forward, the year is now 2017. Uh, we are living in our parsonage with our puppy and we are expecting our first baby together. So this is Amy. Amy's here. Yeah, that's you, sweetie. Yeah. Uh, Amelia Jane Boley was born on November 9th, 2017. Uh, she's all dressed up for track and field day at the end of the school year here. She's going to enroll in first grade at Tonda Elementary down in Canton later this fall. Uh, Tonda got some cheers earlier in Impact Worship as well, more, more than CMU did, actually. So, uh, after four years in Wald Lake, we were reappointed to Gull Lake UMC. Similar names, Wald Lake and Gull Lake. This was in Richland, just outside Kalamazoo. Uh, this appointment worked out well for us because by that time, my parents had relocated to Kalamazoo from Mount Pleasant. So, we had childcare ready and available when we arrived. Uh, but, for anyone who's doing the math, trying to keep up with the timeline here, anyone know what year it is now? It was 2017, we were there for four years, so the year is now 2020. The year is now 2020. So we ended up moving in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. And oh yes, by the way, we were also pregnant with our second child. So here's Eliza. She's the one wandering in the pews over on the side there. So Eliza Grace Boley was born on August 18th, 2020. Uh, she will turn four in just a few weeks and she will be attending preschool right here at the church in September. So I'll get to bring her to work with me every single day. Uh, we spent four wonderful years in Richland uh, before receiving a call from the Board of Ordained Ministry about a church called Plymouth First United Methodist. Uh, I was being appointed as an associate pastor here, and we were being invited back to the east side once again, close to Jessica's family. So we leapt at the opportunity before us, and uh, we're just so excited to be here today. So, that's, that's the end of the long story and how we got here and how I got here. But back to our uh, theme from the scripture earlier. So here's a picture of my family. I'll, get, I'll, I'll name them all for you in a moment. But back to our theme for a moment from our scripture. Does anyone remember what it was after that long story I just told you? Grace. Okay, yeah, something about grace, right? So it's about how God's grace enters into our lives during the most delicate and holy moments. Even the moments when we try to deny God. And as I look back on our story, as I look back on all these different times in my life and our life, as we arrive here in Plymouth to begin a new chapter, I see only God's grace entering in and creating new life. It's a grace we can never deny, no matter how hard we may try. Now, I don't, I don't know uh, that I've ever felt exactly like Peter in very many of these sacred moments, these transitions in my life. Uh, I don't know that I've ever been as pompous or as, uh, as uh, presumptuous as Peter, never as aggressive as Peter, never quite as confrontational as Peter. But I'm definitely flawed the way Peter was. I'm definitely flawed, and I am still very much in need of God's grace. I'm not perfect. None of us is. And you'll learn about plenty of my flaws in due time. If you want to know more about them right now, just ask Pastor Bob what happened to my car while I was taking Pippin to the vet the other day. Uh, that's another story we'll tell. Uh, in short, it was an interesting way to meet some of the new neighbors. We are always in need of God's grace. 
We are always called to be disciples of grace. We can't do any of it alone. And that's why I'm so grateful to have had my family for support all these years. The picture you saw a moment ago, that was my mom, Diane, my dad, John, my brother, Rob, my sister, Hannah. Uh, we were all uh, decked out, there we are again. We're all decked out in our uh, Wolverines colors, as you can see. So lifelong uh, Wolverine athletics fans we are. Rob and Hannah both attended uh, U of M and now live in Ann Arbor. Uh, told you I'd share just a little bit of my personal interest. So we, we love uh, Michigan athletics. I'm also a big fan of international soccer. I've been watching the Euros for a couple weeks now and the Copa America, if there's any soccer fans out there. I love reading, I love music, I enjoy writing. Uh, I'm a millennial, so I enjoy comic books. I enjoy science fiction and fantasy. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, I'll talk to you about it all day long. Uh, one little tidbit you might be interested to know about me is one day I dream of writing and publishing my own fantasy novel, but that's probably a few years away. And of course, I bond with my family over all these things too, and they support me in my interests and I them in theirs. And of course, uh, to wrap it up, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the support of my amazing wife, Jessica, and our two precious daughters, Amy and Eliza. I've got a picture of all of us at, at uh, their dance recital last month. So I look at these images, and I look back on everything that's led us to where we are, and I see only grace. Grace, grace, and more grace. And I'm sure that we will encounter even more of it here with all of you. Thanks be to God. Uh, amen and amen.